Hey, Horse Center fans, we have a big show. Matt, it looks like it's the best day of racing or the best weekend of racing left in 2018 to talk about. That's for sure, Brian. We got some great racing. Uh, big card at Aqueduct, headlined by the Cigar Mile, and some fantastic turf racing at Del Mar. Yeah, Matt, who is the best horse that half the country probably even hasn't heard of yet? And, and she's running in the Matriarch. Plus, we got Derby implications in the Remsen. We got the Demoiselle, the Hollywood Derby, the Gopher Wand, maybe Eclipse Award on the line. Watch it all now on Horse Center. Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I'm good, Brian. We're heading to December 1st. I feel like December 1st should be like some kind of special day, like January 1st and April 1st and May 1st. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, why don't we call it Cigar Mile Day? Cigar Mile Day. Winter seems like it got here early this year, Matt, but there is still good racing going on this year. And this weekend certainly is a great example. We have coast-to-coast -coast grade one races and I think, uh, I think a few of those uh, really have some nice fields, Matt. So let's jump in. We're going to start in your neck of the woods. We're going to start at the big A of Aqueduct. And we're going to start with the headliner on Saturday, which is the grade one cigar mile, Matt. One turn mile at Aqueduct. And it features Mendelssohn, Beholder's little half-brother Mendelssohn, who's lost five in a row. Yeah, Brian. It's all, I guess if you're going to be at the Cigar Mile, or you're watching the Cigar Mile, and you're thinking about betting the Cigar Mile, I guess you got to make some decisions about Mendelssohn. Um, do, you, do you think this is the time? It, it certainly is a softer field than uh, what he's been facing in the Breeders' Cup Classic, in the Jockey Club Gold Cup, and even the Travers, uh, for, for that matter. Um, but for me, I'm not excited about the Mendelssohn prospects, and this is from somebody who was very keen on the horse on the Derby Trail. Yeah, you and I differ a little bit on our odds expectations in the Cigar Mile, Matt. I actually have Coppertown uh, listed as the favorite in here, and and, and Coppertown, uh, Coppertown, you're 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 shaking your head because you had him five to one on the morning line above Sonny Ridge. Matt, there's no chance he's higher than Sonny Ridge. I'm sorry to say. I don't think there's a chance he's higher than pattern recognition. Uh, Coppertown, I think, will get pounded in, in the windows. And it'll it's a, it's a two-horse race for favoritism here. Coppertown has done nothing wrong. If you look at the horses he beat last year, he was beating some good horses uh, early in his career as a three-year-old. Of course, he had a year off, and then he came back with that big race at Keeneland. Uh, six and a half. Now he stretches out to a mile. Uh, of the two, I, I could see either winning. I could see either being the favorite. I think it will be Copper Town. But Mendelssohn, I, I go back to those races he's run. I don't think he was himself in the Kentucky Derby. That's pretty obvious. I don't even think he was himself in the Dwyer. He's won at this middle distance before. And if you go back to the Breeders' Cup Classic or the Jockey Club, I think those races win this. Unless Copper Town's just a freak. And then I think we have Horses like Pattern Recognition and Sunny Ridge coming out of the Kelso that are just a, a cut below, and you'll see that on the odds board as well. Yeah, I'm going to have to disagree with you on, on Copper Down. I, 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 these are not the the town Todd Pletcher days of the past. Um, these are the days of Pound Chad Brown, um, and, and I think that. Chad's horses in there, including Pattern Recognition, whose race at in, in win in the Kelso uh, looks really good on paper, and that will carry a lot of weight. Um, if if Copper Town is, as you say, uh, going to be close to uh, Mendelssohn in the wagering, then 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 I think that's a bad bet. Um, he. He appears to be a horse that's very talented, but we're looking at a horse that's never run in a stakes race. And and uh, this is a grade one. It's not the deepest grade one in the world, that's for sure. But uh, still, it's it's a big 
step up for a lightly horsed race that's got gaps in his uh in his pps uh hey you know i'm a big pletcher supporter but um I can't put any money on Coppertown and I can't put any money on Mendelssohn in here. Uh, uh, too many chances for me on Mendelssohn. Um, I'm not going to draw a line through the Dwyer um, as you were uh, uh, going to do. Uh, one turn mile there says to me, well, that wasn't any better a situation for, uh, for Mendelssohn. Frankly, I don't love Ryan Moore as the rider in here. Um, I would have replaced him with one of the the, the regular high-profile New York riders to give him a legitimate shot. All that being said, Brian, I'm going to pick Sonny Ridge in here. Um, he's a horse that likes the one-turn mile, has done some good things in there. There's a lot of pace in this race. I think it sets up well for Sonny Ridge. Yeah, Matt, perhaps what I should do is make a side bet with you because uh, what, what Copper Town's odds are going to be because I, I, I think he's in the 3-2 to two range, not the 5-1 oh. to one range. Um, so, well, we can make that side bet. I, I don't really love the cigar miles of betting race. Mendelssohn, I think, is the best horse in here. But, uh, yeah, we see horses like this lose all the time where he's come out of some really tough races. But, again, if you look at that Jockey Club Gold Cup where he ran 109, he was chasing Diversify, put Diversify away got to beat two lengths. Uh, I think that race wins this. So we'll have to see what Mendelssohn we, we see in the cigar mile. You know, I'd like to, uh, Sonny Ridge, you make a good point. And I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised by your odds on Sonny Ridge in here. Uh, like I said, he'll be, he'll, he'll be quite a bit higher than uh, Coppertown for sure. But, um, uh, Sunny Ridge is the rallier in the group. You know, there's, there's the New York grid pat, patted on my back. Uh, but everybody else uh, really wants to be close. Mendelssohn, Coppertown, Pattern Recognition, uh, True Timber. So there, there is pace. And for that reason, I, I kind of like your Sunny Ridge pick. I just think the top two are better, and it's just a matter of which one runs their race and which one can stalk and, and, and run by. I don't think this is a race where the two favorites are going to get beat. I think the Kelso was a weak addition of uh, uh of the kel so if you look last year pa pattern uh recognition ran against coppertown i know it's over a year later but uh, of course it was no match uh so i i think they're cut below and i think we're going to see that i hope sonny ridge always rooted for the new jersey but i hope he runs a good race i think you're going to get more like six to one uh but um yeah for me it's not a great betting race mendelson coppertown I'll take that side bet that Coppertown is closer to three to two than five to one. If you want to do that, um, well, I would certainly take. I would certainly put a bet out there that uh, Coppertown is closer in odds to Pattern Recognition than to Mendelssohn. Okay, we can do that too. <laughs> I am the favorite. All right, so Matt's on Sunny Ridge. I'm saying it's going to be the favorites one way or the other in the Cigar Mile. And the favorites for me, of course, Mendelssohn, Coppertown, as we talked about. Hey, Matt, what about the Go for One? Go for One is early on the card Saturday at Aqueduct. And, and I think there are Eclipse Award ramifications here because I think the uh, year, the 2018, that Marley's Freedom has put together, if you compare it to any other female sprinter in the country, stacks up pretty darn well. The Go for One is a mile, but it's a one turn mile. It's it's a graded race in New York, so I think it could pad her uh, uh, statistics or her resume this year a little bit. You know, if I had to pick one horse to be the Philly and Mayor Sprint Champion, it would be her. So I think, you know, if people are really on the fence on this award, this could be the race that pushes them one way or the other for Marley's Freedom, who's bound to be the favorite in the go for one. Yes, uh, uh, thanks for uh, bringing that explanation out, Brian, because... Uh, as I was looking at the field for the go for one, I was scratching my head about why, why is Baffert sending Marley's freedom out here for this race? She's never run a mile. Um, yes, she loves New York and runs well in New York. Um, but this is an act, this is aqueduct and, and, and that's a whole different kind of track. Um, but, 
I think maybe you hit the nail on the head there, Brian, with uh, the eclipse ramifications in there, because I think uh, a nice win going the one turn mile in uh, the go for one may be just what Marley's freedom needs to to, to push voters uh, in her direction a little bit more. So I think that makes a little sense. That being said, I, I just... I don't feel good about Marley's freedom in this race. Um, she's going to be a very, very big favorite in here, no doubt. And um, she hasn't run a mile. I, yes, it's a one-turn mile, but she's never taken that on. She ran a big seven furlongs uh, this summer in New York. But it, it, it's a question that has to be answered, and, and I don't like the odds. I, I guess maybe I like... Uh, Pacific Freedom in here, who does like the, who does like the mile, has run real well at the mile, um, and also maybe you know at a bigger price than that, I like the New York bred Bonita Bianca uh, for Jason Service, who's coming off a real big uh, victory in the Empire Distaff. So, if I got to give you a pick, I'm going to play against Marley's Freedom in here, mostly because of the odds and because I was a little disappointed with her performance uh, in the Breeders' Cup and go with Pacific Wind. Yeah, I can't blame you again, Matt. And unfortunately, uh, the first part of the show, it looks like I'm I'm thinking the favorites are going to uh, just carry the day in here. So I do think uh, go for one. For me, hey, one turn is a big difference from two turns, even if it's the same distance. So a mile here i think suits her you know she's obviously good at seven furlongs i thought her breeders cup filling the mare sprint actually was pretty good she broke a little slow she was really wide the whole way she got beat half a length so uh, i i thought all things considered she was probably best that day in the philly and mare sprint at the breeders cup and uh in here you know i i'm not sure how low she'll be she's going to be a pretty big favorite brown could get bad maybe pacific wind who probably is the most likely horse to beat Marley's Freedom. I think I agree with you there. Uh, she's two for two at a mile. She's proven uh, a little bit below uh, the top ones. She's coming off a decent race where she was third in the spinster, but even though spinster fillies didn't really uh, do a, a ton at the Breeders' Cup distaff. So I think she's proven a cut below the very best, but maybe at a mile Pacific win is uh is a is a play in here and then the other brown your love is uh just getting better and better and i like her form going in there so if you're going to try to beat her i think both of the browns make sense your your new york bred long shot certainly in with his chance uh sower i believe you say it's sower not sour uh sower should set the table with a ton of speed so uh, i think the favorites will have a chance i'm on marley's freedom in here but uh, as a betting race i'm not excited about it all right, Matt, how about we take our uh, show on the road a little bit here. We leave uh, the uh, the uh, balmy conditions at Aqueduct, said sarcastically, and we head to sunny Southern California because there's some really good turf racing this weekend. The Hollywood Derby will be the feature on Saturday, but the day after the matriarch, uh, grade one Philly and Mare, one mile turf race, Matt, and I think this race has come up big. And I tell you what, Basilica, Basilica was a $40,000 claim for Jerry Hollandor for early this year. She's won eight in a row, man. Uh, it's, a, it's a remarkable story. And, and, and let me say, I, I'm very impressed with these two turf races uh, uh, in California this weekend. Uh, none, of the, none of the five horse fields uh, that we sometimes see out there. These are, these are big fields, deep fields quality fields uh, of, of really, really talented um, uh, turf horses, not just West Coast. We got them coming from uh, a whole plane load of them coming from the East Coast and, and even, so, even a little bit of international flavor. So uh, terrific uh, turf races uh, out there, Brian. Yeah, and Matt, and Basilica is not a, uh, a cheaper horse by any means, despite being claimed I believe it was back in February, like I said, for $40,000 uh, by Jerry Hollendorfer. She's proven to be really, really good in, in several of these races the last four or five months now. She is the queen of California turf racing. And, uh, you know, I looked I looked for reasons to, 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 to bet against her or not like her in here because I, I've never seen her in person. 
and I haven't seen her come east at all. And, and I don't think the Philly and Mare Turfers were uh, superstars out there in California, but her form and her performances and her speed figures and her style of running and, and what she's done time in, time out, you know, it's, it's hard to knock her. She is that good. Having said that, Chad Brown is coming out with not one, not two, but three really nice turf fillies in here in Quidora, uh, Uni, and Rimska. So, Matt, uh, I guess the question now becomes uh, which Brown is going to end the winning streak? Uh, yeah, Brian. Uh, and Basilica is, is just an amazing story. And like you said, uh, she's worked her way up the ladder since uh, Jerry Hollendorfer claimed her. her. Her her last win in the Gold of Kova, she went a mile in 133 and change. Uh, um, the turf courses out there are fast, but there's tons of speed signed on in the matriarch. Um, she's going to get a perfect setup in here. I don't know, Brian, maybe we're going to swap places in here and maybe I'm going with the favorite in Basilica in here and, and you're going to try and beat her. But, um, uh, you know, me, I'm usually going to stick with the Eastern horses, but I don't know. It, 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 it's, it's hard to knock a horse like, like her in here, but, like you said, Chad Brown's got Rimska, who's won four of her last five, including the Athenia most recently uh, at Belmont Park. Kadora is one of those horses that's going to be part of the, the speedy uh, pace that I talked about, won the Boston Spa. And Uni has got three in a row wins also, including the Noble uh, Damsel. So, uh, um, you know, uh, terrific uh trio there's uh mission impassable uh also in there who uh in the queen elizabeth two at keeneland grade one huge race to finish second in um her first north american start she's got to be considered yeah I, i'm against the three-year-old just because of how strong this race is that's mission mission impossible but uh, uh the brown fillies need to be respected i actually think rimska might be um the least of the three for me, even though her form is so good, I think she might like it a little bit wetter. And Quidora, I would like, because I think Quidora wants a firmer turf rather than a wet turf. Uh, but I am a little bit worried about the pace setup for Quidora. So uh, the brown that I think has the best shot, I'm not sure how they're going to bet the browns. I know all three will be bet, and, and that makes Basilica probably not uh, a real, real low favorite. Uh, but probably the one I like best is Uni. Oni seems really talented. She can rally, which, as you kind of intimated there, it sets up for a little bit in the matriarch. And she, if you look, she really is good at this one-mile distance. So uh, it'll be interesting to me because I think all three brown fillies are, are grade one, grade two quality. And uh, this will be a good test to see just how good Facilica is. Right now, I think she's the best horse in America that a lot of people have never heard of. Uh, just because she's never left California and she, you never heard of her before this year or maybe the last four or five months. But Basilica is good. She's my top pick in here as well, Matt. I'm on the favorites early in the show, as I mentioned. <laughs> but uh, I'll just throw out an exact it just, just to have an opinion, and that'll be Basilica uh, over Uni. Uh, and Uni is the one I like best of the brown trio. Yeah, fair enough. And there's some other good horses in there too that we haven't even mentioned, like Donna Bruja and and uh, also. Yeah, Valdorna. Valdorna goes. I think uh, she's uh, something uh, to to look at as well. We don't know the draw yet. It's coming out later today, but uh, it'll be interesting to see because it is a loaded matriarch this year. A very good uh, December two race out at Del Mar. And speaking of very good races out of Del Mar, Matt, you talked about a little bit already. The Hollywood Derby is very much like the Matriarch in its depth. It's uh, It's got a lot of interesting horses, um, much like uh, 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 Val uh, Vasilika. Am I saying that right? Vasilika. Uh, River, River Boyne has uh, kind of been the king of the California three-year-old turf horses. He's won a lot of races out there. He's been beaten, at least uh, recently, unlike Vasilika, but uh, River Boyne uh, looks like a deserving favorite in the Hollywood Derby, but there's lots of other options. There sure are. Uh, we've got the top three finishers uh, from the Twilight Derby at Santa Anita out there, a race that River Boyne won, 
who's won three of uh, his last four races, um, have at it uh, for Christophe Clement, was uh, second in that race, and before that won a stake, uh, won the Hill Prince back in New York, and Desert Stone was third in that race for Richard Baltus. He's always dangerous uh, on the turf in there. You got Chad Brown, has to, we got to have Chad Brown in these races, Raging Bull, who was a little disappointing uh, in his last race in New York, but before that had two big wins at Saratoga, got Joel Rosario up, uh, an interesting one from Chad Brown. Uh, he's got instilled regard making her, making his turf debut in there after a really disappointing run in the Pennsylvania Derby. We can always draw a line through clunkers that horses run at parks because of that uh, because of that quirky track, you got Carrick in there coming back uh, for um, for Tom Morley. Uh, tried older last time in the Turf Classic, which was a tough spot. Before that, uh, was a nice winner of the Secretariat at Arlington Park. Now back against three-year-olds only uh, could be dangerous and and maybe a good price. So. Um, Kind of another uh, quality field. Yeah, and, and I would think River Boyne is the horse to beat, but I don't think he's going to be low like uh, many of the first three races we talked about. Basilica, I think, would be the highest uh, uh, or higher than Marley's Freedom a little bit. I think River Boyne, you get at least a decent shot if you think he's going to win again. And he's probably the most likely winner for me. But I'm gonna I'm gonna look at a long shot in here, Matt. First off, uh, the New York horses, you know, have added had a shot at River Point. He didn't beat him last time. I don't know if he beats him this time. It'll be interesting to see because there's not a lot of speed in this one. If have added tries to go after that early lead from the rail a little bit, Raging Bull is a horse with a lot of talent. He might like it wet better though, and I think he needs pace. Uh, you know, he was two to five in the Hill Prince when uh, have added beat him. So uh, I'm not sure what kind of odds you get on Raging Bull for Chad Brown in here, and he certainly could win. But I think this might be a spot where he's beatable again. Um, Karik, you know, Karik is obviously a very talented horse, uh, the Donegal horse who won the grade one secretariat, grade one winner. Uh, but that was a mile and a quarter. Then the Turf Classic was a mile and a half. I'm not crazy about the drop from a mile and a half down to this nine furlongs at Del Mar trip for him. But, uh, you know, he, he's obviously a very talented turf horse, too. So he's he's in it with a shot. Devers, De Desert Stone was the other horse you mentioned, having run third uh, last time out there behind River Boyne and have at it. But uh, one that was in that race, Matt, interests me quite a bit, and I think he's going to be a bomb, and that's Kazan, uh, Simon Callahan's uh, horse, uh, Shanghai Bobby, uh, really developing to a nice turf horse. And if you, if you look at the Del Mar races, uh, in fact, he beat River Boyne a few starts back. He was up high odds that day. But if you look at his series of Del Mar races since his return to racing, they're all good. And then last time it looked like he had a little bit of trouble, was beaten over four lengths uh, by River Boyne last time. But I think at the odds and the fact that he obviously likes Del Mar, I think, I think uh, Kazan at uh, probably 30 to 1 in here is uh, going to be my top pick, Matt. I think he's got a real shot in a wide open race. Sounds good, Brian. May, may I suggest that maybe you use that horse in some of the bottom spots in the trifecta, Mr. Trifecta Zipsy. Um, I'm going to go with River Boyne as my pick in here. So uh, um, one of us is on the likely favor. Yeah, and maybe three to one or so you get on him here with all the betting options. And River Boyne, like I said, uh, probably the most likely winner and a horse I will be playing with Kazan uh, as well. So, yes, I will be trying some uh, exotics for sure, Matt. All right. So big turf racing in California. We got some big two-year-old two races, Matt, in New York on uh, Cigar Mile undercard. Uh, frankly, though, I was a little disappointed with the fields for the Remsen and the Demazel. I was hoping they'd come up a little bit bigger. But still, these are uh, important two-year-old races, some of the last important two-year-old races of the year. Matt, let's start with the Remsen, and it looks like Maximus Mischief coming from Parks and Network Effect, Chad Brown, will be the two favorites. Yeah, clearly, and, and I think especially what you said, 
that uh, this is a big race uh, applies to Maximus Mischief in that uh, his first two races were at Parks. He has the highest bias buyer speed figure, 98, of any two-year-old uh, this year. That's a big number. His, his two races at Parks have been very impressive, but it is at Parks, uh, and Robert Reed Jr. is sending... Uh, sending the horse to the Remsen, and I think this is a great spot for him to get a little bit more of a measuring stick about uh, the quality of the horse in here. And he just might be, even you know, with the quality of this field, he just might be good enough uh, to, to handle this field to, and, and move on. But network effect, as you said, um, second in the Nashua behind the Highly regarded Vacoma coming out of the Na out of the Nashua got a big speed figure out of that race. Uh, Vacoma's trainer George Weaver is deciding to stay down in Florida and, and pick up his uh, Derby Trail down there. As uh, at least for now, maybe he'll come back up for some of the other uh, New York Derby Trail races. Um, the, the other one, only other one I want to throw in there is Bourbon War for Mark Hennig. Um, had a very, very nice maiden special weight win in uh, his debut and, and and has every right to get better. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, Matt. I think there is a lack of interesting horses here uh, to play. So, again, it's not the greatest betting race in the world. I'm kind of a believer in Maximus Mischief. Um, I think both of those races at Parks were very, very fast. I'm not a big buyer person either, uh, but you take notice when uh, when this horse gets 94 and 98, I believe it was at Parks. So Maximus Mischief, and just looking at the workouts, uh, you know, this this horse has obviously talent. Having said that, nine furlongs at Aqueduct, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure that's going to be his game if he's if he's a true distance horse. And uh, the same could be said for network effect, the, the clear, I think he'll be the second choice, but maybe he gets bet pretty close to Maximus Mischief for Chad Brown. Um, I thought that Nashua was a very good race where he uh, uh, just pulled away from some good horses behind him and was uh, second best to Vacoma, but it was a good second race. For Both of the favorites have only run two races, and I'm not sure either of them really wants to be distance horses but they really do look to stand over this field in class. So of the two, I like Maximus Mischief a little bit better, but certainly Network Effect has uh, every right to be a really good horse as well. So it'll be interesting to see what these two very promising horses do. I think Maximus Mischief um, could be a horse. You know, people throw out Smarty Jones because where he came from and what he looked like early to this point, Maximus Mischief could be that type of horse uh, off of all of his workouts and those two big races. Bourbon War, you mentioned, I, I guess he's the third choice for Mark Hennig. Uh, yeah, it was good enough maiden win, professional looking maiden win. The thing about Bourbon War is the breeding for me, uh, really well bred horse. Of course, his mare, my conquestadori, was uh, a, a major talent. I, I don't think she ever quite lived up to. Uh, what she looked like she may be, but she was a very talented filly. So Bourbon War, it's tough to come in off of one race to this nine furlong Remsen, but Bourbon War could be a very good one as well. He was purchased for over $400,000. So uh, they obviously had high hopes for Bourbon War. And then the only other one I could have mentioned, Matt, is Jungle Warrior has two decent turf races. Um, can he get dirt? He's a son of Animal Kingdom. It's possible he takes to dirt. Uh, I think out of all of them, he's the one that I kind of like going the distance. So maybe Jungle Warrior is a horse to throw in at some odds, but uh, not a great betting race, Matt. Yeah, and just last comment about Maximum Mischief making the move from Parks. Uh, you know, Parks is uh, in some ways similar to Aqueduct in that it's a track that tends to be deep and tiring. So uh, uh, Maximum Mischief is going to face those kind of things, uh, a, a deep track and a track that doesn't produce big winning time. So that makes me think, kill transition to the big a uh pretty well there you go all right matt well the remsen i didn't th think was a good betting race but may have some serious talent in it 
But Demazel for me is kind of the opposite. I was actually disappointed by the uh, potential talent level of the Demazel Phillies. But on the other hand, I think it might be a good betting race. Certainly the favorite's going to be the Go Dolphin, Kieran McLaughlin, Philly and Liven. Who's, uh, who's well-bred and has done nothing wrong in her career so far. Yes, well-bred and had a very nice second place uh, in graded stakes company in the grade three tempted already. So, yeah, I agree. Uh, likely favorite in there. Uh, um, but some other horses of interest, uh, uh, Molto Bella for Ian Wilkes uh, is shipping up from uh, Kentucky. Uh, the horse also has some stakes experience, finished second in a stake at Churchill Downs. Uh, um, so uh, another one with talented uh, with talent in there. Yeah, uh, yeah, th there, there's some interesting fillies. I'm actually thinking that in live and it's beat, beatable in here. I wasn't crazy for the tempted. Yes, she was second, but she was well beaten second. And uh, looking at how this race is, uh, how I expect it to be bad with Enliven under two to one, I think you got to take a shot to beat her. You mentioned probably the second choice, the Ian Wilkes filly, uh, Molto Bella, who was second in the racks to riches. But I'm not crazy for her either. I mean, she could win it as well. But I think there's other options. You, you look at the Rudolph Brissett filly coming from Kentucky as well. Positive spirit is interesting. Rudy Rodriguez's filly, I tell you what, Philly Joel. Uh, some people may bet her on the name, and I'm not sure how much she gets bet, but her uh, sprint races were, there There was some trouble and there was some rallying going on in her first two races. And then when she stretched out to two turns, Philly Joel really won for fun. So I think she's a big threat in here, even though she's moving up in class. And again, just like the Hollywood Derby, I'm not going to get crazy odds, but uh, my top pick actually is going to be a long shot in here as well. I landed on Jennifer's dream, Matt. Uh, this is a, speaking of good breeding for John Service, uh, this is another really well-bred filly. She's a daughter of Joyful Victory, the grade one winner, beautiful gray filly from a few years ago. She's only had two races. She's only won a two, uh, but I liked her maiden win at Laurel, and then I liked her second race where she made a big move and then got caught late. I think Jennifer's dream, if she improves again, I think those Laurel races actually aren't as cheap as you might think comparative to the rest of the field in here. So if I can get 10 to 1 on the Daughter of Joyful Victory for John Service, I think Jennifer's Dream is uh, got a big shot in the demo zone. Yeah, hey, Brian, John Service is very, very dangerous when he ships to New York. He he only comes to Belmont Aqueduct uh, when, when he's got a good horse. And this is another one from uh, the Cash is King uh, ownership group who uh, Service has done really good things with. So that's another indicator that that this horse has some quality in here um you're going with service i'm gonna go with rudy um with philly joel i like that race and hey you gotta love the name well if philly joel is good enough for christy brinkley she's good enough for you matt that that's a very bad joke hey anyway folks that was our show today on horse center we uh we previewed a lot of big races this weekend the cigar mile go for Juan, the matriarch and the hollywood derby and then, of course, the Remsen and the Demoiselle. Matt and I will be betting at the windows. We hope that you do as well, and we hope uh, that you win as well. Matt, what else is going on? Can I get a parting shot from you, sir? Sure. I will be at Aqueduct for the Cigar Mile Day and the Remsen. So say hello if uh, we run into each other uh, at the Big A. And uh, next week we'll be talking Kentucky Derby, Brian. Absolutely. Kentucky Derby, a little Los Al Futurity as well, Matt. A little update on Matt and our venture uh, with our group Derby Day Racing. We now have two two-year-olds down in New Orleans, Matt. They're enjoying the warm weather. Uh, uh, Pain is my gain. Arrived there a couple weeks ago, and then Sooner Schooner just arrived there this week down there with Buff Bradley, so we're excited that they're back in training at fairgrounds. We look forward to a good winter for them. Thank you to Brett Workman. Thank you to our sponsor, the best contest site out there, Derby Wars. Folks, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here on Horse Racing Nation, do it now. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week right here on Horse Center.